Thanks, Mike, for the introduction and uh, welcome everybody. Uh, we're pleased to be up here this morning to explore a topic that I think is going to be interesting for everybody. And while these guys are getting uh, wired up here, um, let me just make a, a few um, introductory comments. Um, we're we're going to explore some what I guess we call alternative or non-traditional sources of funding, which I guess means anything other than venture capital, um, particularly for early stage companies. And maybe I can just share a, a few thoughts about some of the things that we've been seeing at Oppenheimer. We've been uh, heavily focused in the med tech space for 15 or 20 years now. And we work with a broad range of medical technology companies ranging from uh, raw early stage startups to venture backed companies to middle market public companies. Um, and at least historically, uh, the the bulk of those companies have been venture backed companies that are, you know, taking a new therapy through a clinical trial, running the regulatory hurdles and, and looking for uh, a commercialization stage exit exit kind of a thing. Um, and our experience has been, I think, similar to the data that uh, you saw this morning, the PwC data. Um, <clears throat> it seems like we've done m many more financings for our later stage clients. Uh, many of them have been looking for exits sooner than they otherwise might. At some days it feels like we're selling more companies than we're starting. But a couple of months ago I had occasion to actually count the number of new companies that uh, we started working with over the last year or so. And it was a surprisingly large number, more than it felt like anyway. But I would say that most or maybe even all of them uh, were pursuing alternative sources of financing um, really because that's all that was available to them. You know, things like government grant programs, um, angel groups, super angel groups, a anything but uh, traditional venture capital or at least traditional U.S. venture capital. We, we have, in fact, uh, been working with a handful of companies that um, seem to have had some success raising money in Europe. Um, typically that comes with it. A, uh, requirement uh, or, or at least a strong preference for some level of European operations, which um, could mean starting commercial operations, but it could also mean relocating and reestablishing the company in Europe. Um, and so we've seen that a little bit, but may maybe I'll start and ask each of our panelists to introduce themselves, maybe give a brief commercial about uh, the kinds of things that your firms do. And we'll just go from uh, this end to the other. Let's start with Matt. Sure, thank you. So Matt Rizzo, I'm with Orbimed Advisors. Orbimed is a healthcare dedicated investment management firm. The firm itself has been around for over 20 years, currently has over six billion in assets under management. And that's across several different fund strategies, everything from private equity to venture capital to uh, public equity investments. Most recently last year, we raised a $600 million special situations fund. That's the fund that I'm involved with, and that's uh, really focused on more or less later stage companies providing uh, everything from royalty monetizations to non-dilutive uh, sources of financing. Thanks, Matt. Uh, Justin. Yeah, thanks, Tom. Uh, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. It's, uh, it's a pleasure to be here representing Toronto Stock Exchange and TSX Venture Exchange. Uh, I'm primarily responsible for driving the business development initiatives on the listing side of the business uh, for both exchanges, TSX and TSX Venture Exchange, specifically as they relate to the, relate to the life sciences space. And as part of that mandate, uh, you know, I help to educate on the various you know, pathways that you can come to the market in Canada and uh, you know, help companies look at why they might consider Canada as a destination as opposed to other public markets. Uh, you know, on a global basis, we're, uh, we're quite competitive in the space. We've got, uh, at the moment, we've got 118 public companies listed between the two exchanges. Uh, I think that breaks down 67 on the venture exchange and 51 on the senior board. Um, about 10% of those are uh, in the med tech space. Uh, I think we've got 12, 12 of those uh, 118 are uh, US-based companies that have chosen to come to, to Canada. And, uh, you know, we've got um, a number of innovative ways to get to the market. I think we'll touch on one of those in, in a little bit, and, and that would be the Capital Pool Company Program, or CPC Program for short. So uh, we'll leave it at that. Thanks, Justin. And Dave Rosa from, from Sunshine Heart. 
Thanks. Um, Sunshine Heart is a company that has roots in Australia. You'll hear a little bit more about that and the financing process. Uh, the company now is incorporated in the U.S. Our headquarters are actually right out here in Eden Prairie. And what we're trying to do is um, commercialize a minimally invasive therapy for class three and early class four heart failure. Thanks, gentlemen. Uh, you know, let me start with uh, Matt um, from the investor side. Maybe you can just talk a little bit about uh, your perception of the uh, uh, investing market for medical technology and have you seen a change much in the last year or so since we were here a year ago? Sure. So my focus is actually a little bit more on the later stage at companies. So companies that are about to have a product approved or companies with revenue. And what we've seen actually, it's, it's been interesting. So it's obviously still very difficult out there to find uh, capital. And then when a company does find capital, then if it's equity capital, for example, then there's a uh, you know, sometimes painful discussion about valuation, especially if there's new investors coming in. And so what we've seen, and actually for both private and uh, public companies, public companies call it 200 million market cap or less, is there's actually been a more of a, a demand in the marketplace for some of these uh, alternative forms of capital. And that could be in the form of debt, it could be in the form of some kind of royalty monetization, or it could be in the form of, of some kind of hybrid investment that includes debt plus a royalty interest as opposed to awards in the company. And what we've seen, at least from my standpoint, it's actually becoming more competitive as an investor. And so as, as companies are becoming more aware of this form of alternative capital and are seeking it, what we're seeing is there's actually been some more players that have been coming into the market. And in the last couple of months, in fact, there's been uh, some transactions that were done that w we felt that were very favorable to companies. And so for companies that actually fit the profile for an alternative form of financing, what we've seen, at least uh, recently, is that the, the market has actually been, been improving for that form of capital. And Justin, um Maybe you can talk a little bit about uh, your perspective from north of the border in Canada. Is there a different perspective in the Canadian markets and the uh, yeah, investing I mean, in the U.S. and in particular in the med tech space? Well, I, I think um, y you know the, the sectors, the subsectors we're seeing the most traction in in, in Canada are uh, you know in, in the med tech uh, space, health healthcare technology, healthcare services, healthcare facilities. Those those subsectors are seeing. Uh, a little more traction, and, and we've, I think for the last two years, we've seen um, financing activity in the range of uh, just sort of between 500 and 600 million dollars. Uh, that compares, you know, historically prior to sort of 2007 and, and sort of the early 2000, you know, early to mid 2000s, where we're seeing a little over a, a billion dollars in the, sec in the sector being raised. Um, an important thing to, to recognize is that on aggregate, that money is being raised over the span of uh, anywhere from sort of 90 to 100, a little over 100 financing transactions. So that's been pretty stable over the last couple of years. But I think generally speaking, uh, you know, 2008 was a particularly tough year in the sector, as it was for all sectors. Uh, we've seen activity start to trend up uh, over the last couple of years um, in, in the life sciences space. And that's continuing, uh, we're see continuing to see that growth this year. So Dave, maybe you can um, talk a little bit about uh, your experience, uh, which is a unique one, and maybe I'll start out by asking, you know, why did Sunshine go to Australia for capital, and, and why should another company out here in the audience give Australia a thought? Uh, sure. So well, as I mentioned before, Australia, uh, I'm sorry, Australia, Sunshine Heart was founded in Australia um, by a surgeon that practiced there. And they didn't have necessarily the relationships set up in the U.S. to approach more traditional uh, venture capital. Um, and Australia is a market that is very different from the U.S. and how it looks at risk in early stage companies. So in Australia, uh, it's, there's a large mining um, infrastructure there. And most of the uh, investors there are willing to accept higher risk uh, or make higher risk investments because a lot of the mining investments that are made are boom or bust. Um, and when you think about an early stage medical device company, many of them you know, either go under or become very, very successful. That